Hi, um, well, <clears throat> this is Carmen from Acton Academy. Today is Acton Academy Austin. Today is um, September 4th. And I just came back from meeting with Jeff Sandifer and a parent from the school who also works as a recruiter for big companies. So um, we, we went uh, to get some lunch and to have a conversation about Acton Academy's recruiting process, especially about how they recruit the parents uh, or the families that are joining the school. So the kids are not really a problem, but mostly the parents could be a problem. So basically because it's really, if you get a bad parent or a parent that doesn't get the idea of Acton Academy or why, or the value of untraditional education, and um, if they don't buy it or if they don't believe in it, most basically if they don't believe in it, it's really dragging for the entire uh, culture of the school and for the rest of the families and the rest of the parents. Um, and apparently, um, this school is getting a lot of applicants, so a lot of applications. Um, so they get, for instance, in middle school, 10 applications and they only have three spots. So the question is, of course, they are losing some good parents in the margin, but they just want to get really good families or really good parents into the school. and. Uh, they try and, they're trying to make it more systematic uh, how they all of the f uh, recruiting process because right now it's it has basically been an interview <clears throat> where a one-to-one -one conversation with Jeff but then he doesn't have a lot of time to do that anymore and since Acton Academy is expanding and since a lot of other schools are being opened in different uh, parts of the country and in other countries too then we need a more systematic approach to the recruiting process and um, yeah basically that um, so this really reminded me of one conversation I had once with uh, with Gianca, Giancarlo from UFM um, about how hard it is to get uh, to recruit people for school uh, for UFM that are really learners and people who are really willing to learn to discuss to have a learning experience in school instead of just going there for the degree so it's really hard to do that um and he told me well tell me if you ever find out a way in which you could recruit learners so um i'm thinking i'm, I'm thinking it's hard to recruit lifelong learner parents but there must be a way i think in which if they have enough challenges um along the way hmm, I just had an idea so if they have enough challenges and loops that they have to go through bef before they get accepted into school into the school then the parents that aren't really um, the parents that don't really believe in these ideas would probably self -se self select or self kick themselves out of the school which is part of what Jeff wants to do. And I'm thinking now that if we make the process really um, think really, wait, let me think about how to say this, really thought provoking. If we make the process really thought provoking, then maybe even the parents that weren't um, so but uh, so sold into the idea of Acton Academy, even those parents would uh, 
would become good parents, uh, good Acton Academy parents. So that's what I'm thinking. Like if the, the process is really thought provoking and really educational for the parents, then maybe we could make most of the parents that are um, in the application process really good parents and people who can really get it Mm, yeah so right now I would really value I think having a conversation with uh, mm, people that have been putting thought into this so maybe birth because I'm thinking that the NPC faces a similar pro- problem because you don't want to because I think that it's really the costs of of getting a really bad npc -er, let's put it that way, are much more higher than the costs of rejecting uh, a really good npc -er. Like really, uh, that could be draining for the entire culture. And so I know that the npc has been putting some thought into it, into this. So I'm thinking maybe I could email um, yeah, I'm thinking I could email Bert and maybe Janka. Uh, well, actually, I I just have um, I just realized I have this question for Jeff, and I hope I can ask him it soon. Which is how or what did he do? in order to get so many parents wanting to apply to this school because so that he can select them and yeah because uh when i was living with marcia in chicago i remember that that she had this uh she got a problem with um keeping parents happy with non-traditional education when their children were growing up and and when their children were um sp yeah especially when they were going up to middle school and high school when their parents were getting worried about them getting into college yeah but so right now when i was uh and this with this and <laughs> I'm so excited, so it's hard for me to talk. Uh, well, when I was here, when I was, uh, what's going? What's wrong with me? Well, at this lunch I had with Jeff and the other parent from Acton Academy, they were mentioning how Acton really find success, so and learning. So success and learning, it's not, it's not getting into the ivy league schools or yeah getting to the top schools getting to the top colleges um and they were really finding um success and learning as finding your gifts and your passion and exploding that into the greatest thing that you could exploit out of it. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. So that's how they were redefining a good education and uh, um, success. But Yeah, I was just wondering how I, that will be a project for myself, how could I make a general or, a, yeah, a, uh, yeah, a general definition for untraditional education so that it could be replicable or how could I replicate this phenomena into other untraditional schools like Marcia's Montessori school or Allison's Montessori school in Antigua will 
probably face this issue when children are growing up and their parents start getting worried about them getting into college. So how do we, and even with my parents and how they, and how they as well as many people, most of the people in Guatemala, which is a very status quo, or I don't know how to say a, 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 um, a country based a lot on the status quo. So, oh, if you go to this school, then you're super cool. And then, oh, if you get a, a accepted into one of the top schools in the States, oh, wow, then you're really valuable. And if you didn't go to school, then, oh, you're, you shouldn't be, I shouldn't talk to you because you're not educated if you didn't go to school. Uh, at all. If you didn't go to the uni to a to a university, then you weren't educated at all. So, how could this be replicable, or how could I replicate this in Guatemala and maybe in other places? Because I know that here in the states too, getting into the top schools, it, it's also a lot about the status quo and the status it gives you that you're a graduate from a certain school or yeah so I have those questions um, to keep in mind and later I'll be blogging more on my experiences here in Austin oh well I would just remember now it was remembering one of the things that happened to me this week so I feel like the main character from the tyrant getting who who's getting involved in the in the entire family business so since I am babysitting for the family with whom I'm leaving um, I have been getting really involved I guess in the child's education cause they're they're educating this child in completely non-coercive terms and so yeah but the th the thing that worried me the most uh for the first times for the first week i was in their house which is this week <laughs> um was seeing how he didn't have any consequences he didn't have any consequences for his actions he didn't have to face any consequences uh, basically because if he didn't want to do something he would just start crying and then he would throw things away and he wouldn't have to clean up after himself he wouldn't have to clean up after um, all of the mess that he was doing when he was in a bad mood and so his mom was cleaning most of it and then I noticed how his mom is doing most of the work and is that, and she doesn't have a lot of time left for herself to be on her own um, to the things that she's passionate about. So I can see how mothers forget their passions or can for how they can forget their passions really easily when they are really involved parents, which I think is important too. So that's another question that I would like to address, which is how or what can mothers do so that they can be involved and at the same time uh, never forget about their passions and about their own selves, their own needs, um, yeah, their own passions. Because um, then when the children go all, grow old i've noticed how this mothers don't know themselves enough enough so it seems like all of their value and all of their self-worth is based on their child's self-worth and then so that's like a vicious cycle and then they would also be more um yeah, their, their self-image is super attached to their child's self-image, which is really no, normal in parents, but I've, I've, noticed that, I've noticed that this happens more with um, really 
involved mothers who forgot about their passions and about what they like in life besides being a mother because being a mother it's also a nice experience but there are other things which these mothers also like even if their child is the, their highest priority um, they also have other passions so that's something to keep in mind um, that's one thing and the other thing that I noticed is that there must be a way and I just need to find it I guess where discipline I, I guess self the children can self discipline themselves yeah without any use of coercion without the parents threatening them um, I guess the answer sort of lies in how parents prepare the environment so if it's an environment that's already designed for like Montessori for children to have consequences on the things like the consequences lie already on the materials I don't know how to explain it self-correction self self-correction self self of errors in the use of the materials in Montessori that's what I'm thinking about so if you could prepare an entire environment an entire home if you could equip it so that in the same way as Montessori it would provide that feedback to the child I can see how that would be very helpful too and um, hmm. so I emailed like two days ago I emailed someone I met who I know whom I know is raising her child in a similar way because you sort of you don't want to be coercive with the child you don't you want to respect them all the time but you don't want them to become uh, some sort of lord of the flies or I, I guess some sort of despotism where they do whatever they want in the house and they don't have any consequences for their actions because when they go out um, they'll be facing real consequences in the world so I think that education in general terms is about pre it's about preparing the child or preparing a person to live a free and responsible life and a happy and meaningful life when they uh, grow up or when they when they are not with you I think when they have that independence that meaning um, that responsibility and that freedom I, I think that's what education is really about so yeah now what else can I say I'm loving Arthur Kessler's autobiography I think he's an awesome person uh, such a wonder such a mysterious and and such a, an interesting person really hmm. well so I guess I'm going back to work now so hi NPC or bye NPC this is Carmen from Austin Texas ah oh, something else until today this had been a really hard week for me because I've been trying to wake up at 4 40 a.m. so that I can um, work on three pomodoros in the morning and then come to Acton and then in the afternoon I have I'll have time to share with the family with whom I'm living with but I haven't been able or I just haven't been waking up at 4 40 so I really think that I need to wake up earlier if I want to make the most out of my time here and another thing which was which is really bothering me is I'm having this skin allergies um, I've been allergic ever like seen ever since like th two or three years ago but I don't know why 
I'm getting these allergies and now they have been expanding so now I have more allergy here in my arms and on my neck so I, I emailed my dermatologist and I'm waiting for her reply but I'm also worried because I don't want my allergies to go all that bad because then if I keep on if I if they are itchy all the time and if I scratch them no, oh, that's another thing. They were itching um, during the night when I was asleep. So I, they were itching so much that I had to wake up, and it was it or it is until I scratch them that they stop itching. So that's really uh, that's not something I enjoy, and I know that it's not okay for me to scratch them. But otherwise, I w wouldn't be able to fall asleep. Uh, so I hope I can find a solution for that problem and what else is bothering me oh I kind of feel lonely in a way like I have conversations with people but just about business like stuff but not about my feelings and my uh, my personal issues i guess or i don't know if i my per personal business or i don't know endeavors uh, i don't even think i have that many personal endeavors because i don't think i'm having a such a personal relationship with anyone at all ever since i've been out of guatemala so and since i'm only gonna be here for a month and a half i don't see that much of a value in trying to establish that kind of relationship with anyone really um here because i'm not i'm going to leave soon uh, but i kind of feel lonely sometimes um i'm not gonna say i'm unhappy because i'm not i'm i think i'm pretty happy here i'm learning a lot but there's something missing in my life and I think it's that personal that human relationship with with someone and I'm not talking about a love relationship I'm just talking about a loving relationship so it could be a friend it doesn't have to be a boyfriend or anything so yeah Uh, I've noticed that how much of a need that is for me and I guess for the rest of humanity as well hmm so it's not that like if I'm dependent upon other people I just think that it is part of a it is part of being a social animal being codependent not not codependent but co what this need to relate to other people and to connect to really connect to other people i think that need is present in everyone and it, at least i if i should speak um about myself i think that's a need for sure that i have and that i'm not being and that i haven't been fulfilling lately so i could see how this might be a little bit depressing or saddening for me but uh yeah i don't know yes i've noticed also that i am really good in prepared environments to have conversations with people in environments that are designed for me to have those conversations like at school but then when i'm at a random place, like a, an unknown place with people that I don't know and with environments that I don't know and that were not designed for me to have an experience there. It's really hard for me to speak and to relate to people. So that's something else I have to work on. And I think that this video is already the length the length of a pomodoro so i think that's too much basically <laughs> so that's too much carmen for now oh oh i just want to say something else i was reading conscious business this week and 
and I think it's much more meaningful for me ever since I spent some time at Marsha's house and ever since I w attended her seminar because I learned a lot more about Ayn Rand and I think that makes much more sense and makes me be more, more, much more aware of the metaphysical and epistemological foundations of any theory and it also helps me to understand Kaufman cause, and his definition of consciousness especially because he quote and even I think he quotes Nathaniel Brandon uh, on a definition of consciousness precisely and um, yeah so it's been easier for me to read this book I started reading it like six months ago and it wasn't that meaningful it, it's, it wasn't as meaningful as it is for now to me because I now perceive it in a much broader and uh, meaningful way it's just more meaningful to me so okay bye and I'll speak to you next week